Hey guys, Luna here, and we're back with Hive Swap Friend Sim, and we're going to be doing this episode, what we'll be doing this episode is finishing volume 10 of Far Away Friends, and we already saw the intro in the last episode, and now we're going to go to Tegori Caliber, the Jojo poser, um, hopefully. In an utterly surprising turn of events, the Nightfall finds you trolling Atari in search of, well, trolls. The friendly type, presumably, although you've been known to work wonders with hostile folks, too. You're currently hunting gr your current hunting grounds appears to be a primarily teal neighborhood, which suits you fine. Teals live relatively comfortably and are usually only mildly disdained of you, which is always good. <laughs> This strikes you as a good place to search for companionship. You get another pers pressing concern, though. A faint glow, faint on the horizon, which suggests that the sun will be rising soon, a couple hours from now at most. Night on Ontario seems to last forever, but when the daylight hits, it hits hard, like a truck. But the truck is on fire, and the fire is nuclear fusion, and the truck is a star. Point is, you're not in the mood for another sunburn. You better snag a buddy before it's too late. Yes, the strange horn, eh, hornless thing. Okay, interesting. Ooh, I like this music. It's very catchy. Um, I, I'm just writing a quick note to myself that I forgot to write earlier. So. Speak of the devil, you look around and spot a troll boy with a stylish hat and a sword sheath behind his back. His clothes are a little shabby, but he carries himself with rigid, composed air. Thaw you, some kind of mutant troll, or another sentient creature. Definitely the later, you say, unless you would prefer the former, in which case you're that, actually. But mutants you've learned are not particularly well liked on this planet. An alien? Well, I almost have to kill you then. Not immediately, at least, but you don't appear to be a call on sight species. Lucky for you, I don't have to. I, that I won't have to lose my blade. And lucky for me to find a potential comrade. You know what they seek. Chelsea friendship, but not necessarily in that order. You're about to speak up, but he's already moving on. You seek the meeting place of an Eastern Altaria fine and animated I appreciate some time. Yes. At least some less cultured souls would like to call it the enemy club. Oh, a club! Back home, teachers would go on and on about how clubs were a wonderful place and made new friends. You didn't really believe it then, but maybe things are different here on Ontario. You can't really assert that yes, you are here for the animes. Good. I fear I was going to have to cancel tonight's meeting to the new shows, but if you proceed as. He gestures toward his head and begins to strike confidently toward it, but then he rethinks, pausing to look back at you. Wait, subs or dubs? Mm. Go with subs. <laughs> Entertaining how long you are. But even the greatest Atari philosophers are quite sparing opponents on the battlefield of it. Find your assumptions with my superior logic and taste will be a pretty fitting task. Not really the reaction you were hoping for, but you'll say it to get anything to get into someone's hive, so you'll take it. Tagari invites you into the hive with a sweeping bow and invites you into the foyer. So this is very... Uh, I see some interesting figures to the right, <laughs> but um, both uh, figurines and pillows. <laughs> But uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna make a note of some anime love The hive looked at uh, normal from the out uh, from the outside, and normal by troll standards at least. But the inner decor has entirely different vibe. To it. it reminds you of G Japanese architecture. The Gori takes off his sandals before entering the next room. Take your shoes off too if you had any. As if you step into his living room, you are assaulted, not literally, thankfully, by the absolute smorgasbord of merchandise. This place looks like someone did a griggle search for our Tuga collection and opened the first results. Posters and scrolls adorn every inch of the wall available, and inches 
of the walls that aren't available are blocked by shelves containing all sorts of DVDs, manga, and other forms of media. The large glass shelf shelving unit near the room's exit inspired with veritable co cornucopia of anime figurines, most of whom seem to be varying sta states of undress. Uh, you would like to describe it as tasteful nudity, but you would also like to describe yourself as the most popular person out of Terria, and both would be a lie. Tagora has arranged his merch meticulously according to blood color, from red at the bottom to Isha at the top. I see you are admiring my least obscure I polish them daily, just as I polish my blade. Don't to touch them or you'll taste full of the steel. You stole your tractor hand. You didn't dream of touching them. That was never, ever something you were planning on doing. You will know you to read on them. In fact, you step up far away from the collectibles just in case. Oh, hey, it's double. Another double. With that step, you bump into something behind you. You're small. Woof. Woof. Can't do a good dog bark. As you spin around to look, you see what must be Tagore's Luskis surveying you with an intense key. Looks a lot like a Shibani Shiba Inu. That's what they're called. I thought it's Shibanitsu Shibanitsu or something like that. Shibaninu. They're the ones that kinda look like huskies, but not exactly huskies. If they were twice the size and had opposable everything, honestly watching it scrubs scuttle around like a monkey while sniffing at you pretty enchanting. Eventually you seem to move its standard its standards. Because it darts out of the room, you hear some rustling in what you assume is the kitchen. That was Hadashi in Maleskish. You taught me everything I know. It's not to ask for a better sense than Yeah, dogs are great, you respond. And then immediately wish you could take back. Dogs are great. That could be the blandest possible statement you could have ever made. And possibly an actor too? What, what is this thing called? A bark beast? F a fetch fiend? Wolf grumbling? Oh, Tegger isn't paying attention to you anymore. He's busy pursuing the shelves, picking out some DVDs. My viewing schedule will watch a carefully curated selection of episodes from one classic and one one musical release. But hmm, since you are a newcomer, it might not be best to jump into the middle of the last out to see these philosophers half on. Perhaps you should instead begin with the first season of School Fed Heroes and then transition into some episodes of Kismet Struck Morning. The original airing, of course, not the censored one with the ridiculous CGI dragon. Ugh. <laughs> Looks like Tejiragi intends to take full, full control of the morning's activities, which you find entirely copiatic. The less you need to assert your opinions and make your own choices, the less likely you are to fail. It's probably not a healthy way to live, but it's gotten you somewhere between 1 to 19 friends so far, so you're sticking to it. With a deft and precise movement, the Gary retrieves a disc from the computer and pops it into a troll equivalent of a DVD player. It makes a slimy chuggy, chuggy noises as it sucks the disc in, and like usual, you aren't sure if it's either an inanimate object or a living being. Either way, you're a little disgusted. The DVD player hums and Tegari's TV lights up with a colorful title screen. You're ready to get settled in for a journey to the wonderful world of the animes, but he frowns and pauses the episode less than a minute. Hang on, this isn't the correct copy. The localization of these lines were changed after the original translator was called by a couple blogger for crimes against buffoonery. I specifically ordered the first edition and paid extra for it. This is unacceptable. Gary stops the DVD player and checks the disc and places it back in its case. Oh, well, there's still time, you might. We need to go resolve this immediately. The shop that imported it to me is nearby. He heads for the door and beckons you to follow, which you do. I guess it's too much to hope for a quiet morning inside, wasn't it? At least you get to go shopping for animes, which sounds fun enough. Will it be one of those fancy automated stores, you wonder? No, unlike on most stores on Ontario, this specialty shop ones by a, is run by a living troll, a fellow creator who would not entrust such a work to an automaton. So I would expect with an actual an actual think pen involved that there would be no careless mistakes like this. At least I'm in good terms with the owner, so I doubt there would be trouble. You, on the other hand, expect expect plenty of it. Pretty much everything on this goddamn 
planet has been trouble so far. Does he know how awful it is here? I don't want to be a human splain to him or anything, but things are pretty awful here. Things are pretty awful here. Oh, I guess he knows. Star staring at one of the many billboards that lines the street, which has been defecated with bright red graffiti, and saying some pretty nasty stuff about Trisa. <laughs> the bell sentence grow by the moment. Out here I am I in the larger peril. A blade in me. And not, not, not any blade, but the blade of a razor sharp folded steel container, which under the east are tearing in the moonlight, hunted by the bellows breath of a magnificent draconic horses. Cooled by the shimmering cascade of an acid waterfall, and fit to be handled by only a true expert. Too dense. You're caught off, a little, caught off guard by that question, dancing as in move, moving one's body to music? In a way, yes. Moving to the sweet music of steel on steel, the rhythm of combat, the stiletto step that weaves deep in glory into one beautiful move. Too dense. <laughs> Oh, so frightening. Of course. You should have figured that one out. This guy's dial has only two settings. Talking about swords or talking about anime. Sometimes he gets particularly frisky and talks about both moments. You tell him that you don't really know how to handle swords, but they seem really cool and love to learn. Cool. <laughs> Sword play is more than a cool. It is a way of life. A code of honor. Pick up the blade to bind yourself to the train. Tenets of Bushuto, and to prepare at all times to enforce justice, the only way a swordsman knows how, through steel. Someday, the pursuit of justice may bring me to face to face with these rebels, scum. I must be ready to show them the true magnificent terror of the blade. Who knows, maybe I would even be awarded a clown's congressional medal of honor. A troll can dare to dream. So that's why he wants to practice sword play, huh? To enforce justice. Kind of like a vigilante. Vigilante, please. I would never only ever call a troll who's illegally deserved death. Kind of like lawless. What kind of lawless moron do you take me for? You don't take him for more than all. In fact, he's very smart and clever and just. You hope you're not laying on too thick, but he seems to enjoy the praise. Ah, we're here. This won't take too long. He's taken to a night market that reminds you of the place where you met Polya. A ship mall lies to the left of the many tents and stalls, and a, a sign above with one door reads, Super Tapato and Flex. Very, a very game shoppy. As you enter, Tigori makes a beeline for the counter, which is manned by a PC-looking gold blood with pinkish-looking eyes. You, on the other hand, are more interested in the rest of the store. Looks a lot like Tagori's living room, but bigger. Anime figurines on sale for what looks to be a, a preposterous amount of money. DVDs and comics lying on the shelves, arcade games in the corner. There is, there's even a section for replica swords, which all look far too sharp and legitimately deadly for your life. In between the shelves is an, order, is an olive blood guy. You can't quite tell if he works here or if he's just browsing. You're not sure if any trolls even have normal jobs. You're about to ask the olive guy about a particularly interesting DVD when you're distracted by the commotion at the counter. You're pretty sure you heard Tigari snarling something about his rice as a consumer. Looks like trouble is brewing. You turn your head toward the counter and listen. Do you really think you can get away with tripping me off like this? Do I know? Do you know who I am? My blood cast? A tear of blood like me has connections, a vast network of like-minded souls at my beck and call, ready to be unsheathed against my hapless foes. My legal force I can bring to bear against you is greater than your imperial mind could ever imagine. A fleet of legislators will descend upon me like shadow, shadow clones, each armed with the greatest weapon of them all, knowledge. And you will, an intricate understanding of Altarian legal code, you will be embroiled in my suits, so my life, so mind numbing, you will wish for the swift, swift and early death of my blade can provide. Or, you can offer me an exchange of equal or greater value to my original purchase. Which path would you choose to walk on, scum? 
Wanda closer to the counter, hoping you might be able to resolve the situation, but instead you blumper right into the olive flood and Sandy box something from his hands to the ground. A bunch of assorted products spill out as the shopkeeper gasps dramatically. You don't see what the big deal is, still collecting more DVDs and Wanda. One cover features a troll with a heart-shaped horns and a bright pink sign. Another features some red bloated red bloated douchebag wearing pants way too small for him. The guard picks up one of the mambas and lays it in front of the you explain what I'm looking at here? Imperial Addictive number seconds, section 3.2. The depiction of non standard uh, Mughal jewel attributes is strictly forbidden. Imperial Addictive number 7, section 5. Material which encourages actions against the saint is considered bad of the highest degree. The alibud who can s clearly see the situation raining down here like a scuttle buggy without wheel stops. It's a, cre a creep toward the door. I love to do the same, but you can't give up on potential new friendship. It's basically pathological. I think that my Eastern Ontario hobby shop could stoop it so low as to peddle this criminal filth. Sick and betrayal. The shopkeeper Samus offering a leniency of muggled explanations that only seems in these cigarette program. He was holding it for a friend. No wait, it's a satire? Gregory stands a palm down on the counter and his eyes shoot open, revealing dark purple irises with a strange purple, a strange purple swirl, a swirl pattern. Gregory dictate number 16. First, section 2, satire is especially calculated. You think you can mess with me? I watched countless hours of illegal drama, played and replayed legendary makeup legislature and memorized every twist. I know the law back and forth. Now it's time for the punishment to do. The fucking dub, kill. I sit. The guard leans over the counter. His free hand grips the hilt of his katana, intended, ready to draw. He's about to straight up execute this guy. Do not intervene. You really don't want to get in between the shopkeeper and Tagari's sword. Well, you know, this really does warrant an immediate execution. You to judge. You do, however, squint a little so you don't have to see the full gory detail of the calling. Turns out it's not as clearly gory as you expected. The gory leaves over the counter and swings wildly at the guy, but many of his sex fail to commence. Mostly a bunch of bombastic anime side moves that don't translate well to actual combat. Still, some strikes hit home, drawing a spray of murky gold blood that jolts the shopkeeper out of his petrified fear. He screeches on Lisa's shopping, psionic blast from his eyes, causing Gory to stagger back disoriented. Why the flash of light doesn't seem to have caused any real damage, but it offers the perfect opportunity to flee. By the time your eyes have adjusted, the only thing they see is the back door swing wildly in his wake. Unsurprisingly, the olive blood is nowhere to be seen as well. Gory glances down his katana, stained with the blood of the shopkeeper, and slowly sheaths it. His hands are shaking, paws tapping at the hilt breathlessly. He turns slowly to you, forcing himself back into his usual stoic posture. I, uh, you got lucky, that is all. You cannot hide forever. Let's go, you need to report this to a drone. He strides out of the shop, leaving you to follow hurriedly behind. What a mess. You hesitantly ask him whether it was really necessary to try and kill that boy for he did. Of course it was. The law is absolute. A formula like you might not understand, but it is, my, it is not my duty to question the righteousness of my actions. I am but a tool through which the law is enforced. I am the blade that her imperious consentence wields to maintain order in the world, this world of chaos. Just like this drone. Just as to one, to one of the big hunking drones that have grown all too familiar with it during your stay here on Ontario. Right now, it looks like it's cleaning up some bronze-colored blood that was splattered on the side of the building. The Gori approaches it and hails it, beginning to explain that there's a collector shop. He needs to report for rebel activity, but the drone isn't listening to any of that. It, it slowly turns from him to stare directly at you, and it raises its weapon, raises its weapon to your face. Grating electronic noises, noise issues from its metallic grill, and the immortal words of a wise cartoon, Kartuga, what will you? Hold it! This creature is under my protection and has committed no crime. If you continue 
in this attempted calling, I will strike back with my katana and a strongly worded letter to your superiors. The drone seems pride a simple supply that it can't just get right down to the calling out. Your point, the glorious cat might just be high enough to give it a pause. You, mother of question, are incredibly relieved. The relief quickly fades and the drone produces a palm hut with a blurry picture of you on the screen. A lot of text beneath. Most of it flashing red. That's never a good sign. It looks like a rap sheet. The guard reads it quickly, which is pretty impressed to feet, considering his eyes are so closed and his darkens the further down he gets. Wanted under suspicion of meat products, uh, meat product theft, high school. The assassination of a violent blood in which you didn't realize you rack up such a heavy list of crimes. He's already rounding on you with their fury raiding off every inch of his being. It's terrifying. You've seen this guy arguing with a retail club. You know what he's capable of. All this time, I thought your soul was open to the way of the salmon. I thought I had met a potential new connoisseur of animated arts. But no, your blood to punish your comes only lies through your villainous veins. We're just looking for an alibi. A place to bide your time, to hide away from the drones until it's time to indulge once more in your criminal ways. You tried to defend yourself. You didn't do any of those things. You had a perfectly good reason for most of them. The Gurus isn't buying it. He's clutching his katana's hook so tight, veins are bulging on his hand. Silence, baby. The time, time has come for my blade to strike to you. He draws his blade in a smooth motion and swipes at you. You just barely manage to sidestep the attack. You dart backwards, stumbling over yourself in your face to get away, while he swings his katana wildly around while making lots of weird grunting noises. Once again, his mouth has been writing a check his sword hand can't reach, can't cash. But you doubt that matters when trolls are stronger and faster than you in general. And he's ac accompanied by a giant murder drone. It's like, it's time for you to split and you better do it like a Glancing around, you notice that you're about to cross over a bridge with an underpass beneath it. Perfect! Just like an action hero, you can hop right over the edge and the roll and duck into the underpass and find a nice ending spot. Dash over to the traffic barrier, fall in the middle of the and oh, piss, Jesus, piss, this was higher, way higher than the battle was. You hit the ground for a moment, like, gra and ground hard with a resonant crack. Ugh. And for a moment, your vision goes blank as a wave of pain sears your nerves. As the pain disorders you begins to fade, you decide it's about time to take stock of your situation. A couple broken bones, old hats, a troll trying to kill you, not unfamiliar, drones attacking you, same, and sun about to rise scorched into you into nothing again. Individually, you've risen to a challenge of just barely holding handling each of these problems, but all at once, yeah, you think you're gonna call this one here. <laughs> The shopkeeper. Hey, you know this is a terrible idea, but you've seriously had it up to here with being part being party to the murder of random trolls. You quickly interpose yourself between Tagari and the Gold Club. Does he really have to kill this guy for what seems to be his first offense? You launch into the impassioned spiel about love and friendship and justice, writing the valley of forgiveness and second chances really hard. And about good measure, you throw in a couple of little side note about how to carry his favorite shop will close down if he kills this dude. Sentence. Gory shoves you roughly aside and goes green into this playful ball. Watch semi coming is Gory turns back to the shop to and slowly draws his sword. But then at the last second, he reconsiders. Consider yourself lucky I'm the good of you. If I catch you get selling contraband again, life will be mine. Gori strides out of the store, holding a fresh copy of the deed he wanted to exchange. You give the shopkeeper a very a vaguely apologetic look and rush out of the store behind him. Phew, that was a close one. You thank Tagori profusely for listening to your dumb little speech about whatever it was you said. Honestly, you were for dads. You're clearly new to this planet. I felt pity for your naivety, but I really should have just killed him. Death is a legal, legally prescribed punishment for such be the it's the legally prescribed punishment for most crimes. I should have separated him from his family. 
I should have separated him from his head. When I look into your pleading eyes, I saw... I saw... The girl goes quiet. He would describe the silence as being particularly beating. There's a lot of silences like this in this planet, and finally he speaks. This... This isn't my first time. We should sell for a streak of God and Built about three years ago. I was patrolling the, the high thatch and such evil duels when I caught the unmistakable scent of smoke in the air. Upon pursuing the lead, I saw a high, particularly plate, particularly a collapse, partly um, particularly on fire. My instincts flared and I rushed in to help the innocent soul who was trapped in there. But as I was helping the girl bandage her wounds, it occurred to me that I had made a grievous error in my judgment. Tools below a certain age, without a lust kiss or a proper hive, are considered unviable and stated to be cold. By rights, I should have put her out of my misery, the moment I realized my mistake. And yes, I looked into her deep gray eyes, dulled from pain of loss, and I sheathed my blade. In fact, even though she was hiveless and luskisless, I remained in contact with her to this day, knowing deep down that one day I might call her the law of the and I haven't yet. I don't know if I could. Why does my conviction waver at times like these? He's talking about you, who you think he's talking about. You're pretty sure you couldn't kill her even if you tried. But that's not the real point here. The point is he's spilling some real and true and deep emotion with you. This friendship is basically in the bag. Just gotta drop some sweeping vague wisdom that makes him feel better about potentially not being an unthinkable cog in the Octarian murder machine. You offer a light suggestion that maybe what is legal and what is just aren't always the same thing. Just a little thought. Maybe he's doing the right thing, overlooking his situation because of how obviously fucked up it is to be a homeless orphan. He goes silent for a long time. Great thought, but. Heh. <laughs> You're naive. Naive, uncultured, unlightened. Well, oh, thanks. Make the world is simple, like a cartoon for children. But this is Altaria, a land ruled by cold logic, where a man mu such as myself must make the hard decisions. It's not easy being dedicated but to the code of law. It asks much of us and gives us little in return, but it gives us order to keep the beasts at bay. If I were to question it, what then? Would I begin to wonder if this unjust for if it is unjust for a blue blood to command his servants, the Imperial drones to call the enemy? To obey the ever changing wounds of the Altarian mold. It takes a lot of effort to suppress your. Well, yeah, but for the sake of this begrudging friendship, we'll allow him to continue the long, long. Right in the streets, troll killing troll even more than usual. No, I cannot waver. These heads. Excuse me. These hands must remain steady and true, though I feel a pull toward the scorching fangs of the light. I must continue my path and remain in the tender, righteous embrace of the dark. Truth be my blade, intellect my sensei, and justice my only companion in this lonely world. He goes on like that for quite a while, and you start to muddle together in your head, and you lose count of how many times you repeated some read about justice and truth about being smarter than all other trolls in the room. Honestly sounds to me like he's just lonely. You know a whole lot, a whole lot about loneliness and the porn management thereof. Some people throw themselves into their nerdy anime hobby and others become obsessed with making friends no matter the cost to their mental health, mental or physical well-being. Maybe you just you just need a couple of calls to remind him what it's like to have a good heart. But if you tried to tell him that, he'll probably just respond with another. Hmm. A little long and winded monologue. Likely stolen from an anime he's watched recently. Maybe you should just let him fence. You have many things for lending your ear. Oh, compliment things you have your reviewery. Nothing interrupts the good old right introspection machine like the opportunity to show it on the supplicant and brosia that is a that has any kind of praise or gratitude. It's no big deal, you tell him. A great listener. That's what friends are for. Has he considered having more friends, like you, for example? He opens his mouth like he's about to re reiterate the whole lone swordsman thing, so he hastily trying to change the topic. Much with his eyes. Most shows you've seen have grey irises. Most 
and those who didn't follow the typical biological trend of disbanding. And those who didn't follow the typical biological trend of displaying the blood. Gregory pauses, his group fencing on his sword as his fang did. He's into his lip, which he uses must be the his closely guarded secret. If you earn enough trust to hear it. We are caught in tech lunches for cosplay. Oh, fair enough. Actually, he's cosplaying there. Is a different blood cast even legal on this planet? If he's doing it, is it? If he if he's doing it, it probably is right. You're about to ask when something distracts you. The sight of another troll standing in front of Tigari's hive, using it as shelter from the rising sun. They're pacing back and forth in precise movements, precise movements, glancing at one of the windows, almost like they're planning to break in. And when they hear footsteps approaching, they perk up and roll their head around. Hey, wait a second, I recognize him. <gasps> Polya! I recognize Polya, so Polya's. Polya. Is... Polya spots you before Tagara spots her. Her expression is hard and stark, eyes glancing between the two of you as she searches the situation. And then, like she's throwing into honest guys, her face softens as she smiles. Hey Tiggs, I was starting to wonder where you were, and if anime night was cancelled. Velskis is staring at me through the window. I think it- I think it's funny watching you have a stuck up time, roasting to death while you're chasing pure beasts around the high- I fetch <laughs> Classic Tadashi. Why are you so late? Just busy or expected, it's new work. Sushi, you get choose your sharp plans. Assembling some new mecha models. You know how it is. Yes, of course. It's all too easy to go wrap up in one's hobby. Anyways, I didn't realize it would have a third for once. Not to mention somebody I knew. Nani? You and my new Kahane have already met? She pauses, her eyes darting back and forth between the two of you and two more. She seems to be assessing the situation, playing what looks like an assassin trying to evade cash in. You recognize that look, considering she was literally wearing it last time you met. You're kind of morales. Whoa. That's an, actually not what you thought you were, but you kind of nod and roll with it. It seems like to be what she wants to do. Oh, Morales. Various face times almost inseparably, but you caught it. Nothing gets past your honed friend making rise. Well, actually, a lot of things get past them, but not this particular thing. You're finally tuned into the nuances of social situations. As long as those nuances don't involve making a binary choice of your social future hinges. Well, as you know, I am far too busy studying the blade to pursue quadrants of any sort. This foolish waste of time, were it not the laws of this land, I would swear them off entirely. Are you sure it isn't that you just can't get a date? You don't have to play the mysterious loner, you know. There are there's other clubs you can join instead of insisting on running your own. He helps looking away. Here's Luskis barking from behind the window, in a tone that sounds like laughter. Fool the mark, mock that which they cannot understand. And to think, I was going to congratulate you on finding your love. Once you finish your spiel and one with being done, Morali is the diamond friendship one I believe, and it's the ash and it's the red ash one rather than the heart flush, I believe, if I remember. Talia gives him a light, friendly laugh, which he responds to with a smile. You can tell the exchange is friendly, not only because he's smiling, because he's, but because he's still standing. Enough banter. The harsh glare of the sun begins to crest. We have Eastern Ontario animation to adult him. I'll allow you to both to spend the day in my half if you need Fair space. <laughs> oh, shit, I saw the party? And with more than one participant? That's gotta be worth an extra friend point. You're so in. Shelter from the bolter, bo a boiling death orb in the sky barely even registers you as an added bonus. Polly's, Polly, Polly, Polly smiles at you as the three of you enter to Gary's eye. Gary covers up all the windows to block out the sun, <laughs> and and then starts up a new copy of the CD. Thankfully, he seems to meet his standards this time. You settle him on the couch, basking in a warm room of friendship, and prepare to move yourself to hours of this beautiful, wonderful, wonderful enemies.
We're distracted by the dog. That would be me. <laughs> and since we still have a few options left, dubs. Perfect, a fellow connoisseur. Let's continue. Shigure invites you into his hive with a sweeping bow and sips into the fire. The hive looks normal from the outside, normal as troll standards, and this is not familiar. This is Stone Devine. you have seen this. Um, obviously, me. Both are good. His expression immediately sours a, a look you're all too familiar with. If he had a mouse, he would be frantically scrolling the wheel upward to roll back time and make a new choice. But you live with the real world and you have to face the consequences of your god awful anime opinions. But I have no convention. The anime club is a sanctuary for those of strong will and finely honed ar arguments, not a shelter for calories. Which, what debates can you come from a psychopathic tool such as yourself? How are you going to assimilate my intellect? You begin to s uh, sputter in protest. You are plenty stimulating. You have plenty of long lists of friends who stimulate in all kinds of ways. Platonic ones, mostly, but he's not having any. There are other anime fans who see Perhaps they're getting of the new and blue level. However, Slam. And that is the end. And I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. And may the stars forever guide your path wherever it might lead you into the future. Bye.